Hi, my name is Jam, and welcome to another Bishoujo action figure review. Today we'll be looking at the Seance Era SE3 Cerberus Another Color Version 1 12th Scale Action Figure by Hasuki and Lynx Pulse. Officially, this is the third figure in the Seance Era figure series, but it's mostly just a recolored version of the first Seance Era Cerberus figure, which released in early 2022. Follow the link on screen or check the description to see my review of that figure. This another color version released in October of 2022 for 13,420 yen, and it also appears to be a limited edition and exclusive to certain retailers. I really like the box for the original Cerberus figure, so it was nice to see that this one is practically the same in terms of how it's designed. It comes in an outer shipping box, which remains mostly unchanged, except it seems like a slightly higher quality cardboard, and the Lynx Pulse logo has been switched out for the Hasuki logo. I like the pink accents on this version of the actual box, but I'm a little disappointed with the graphic design. I was hoping for some new artwork of Cerberus in her new colors, but instead we have a simple silhouette. It gets the point across, but it's not as cool as the art on the original version. The back of the box doesn't even feature photos of the figure, just a list of what's inside. It feels a bit lazy and I wish a little more effort were put into the graphics on this box. The box is the same size and format as the old one with a partial lid that is held on by magnets at the sides. Once you open the box you are greeted by a similar cardboard overlay with an additional overlay denoting the limited run of this figure, and mine is number 316 out of 500. As with the first figure, everything is held securely in two layers of foam. I still think this is a great way to package a figure, as it's a compact yet protective solution. As a comparison, it's smaller than a standard Figma box. The Lynx Pulse Seance Era series uses TB League seamless bodies, and this is the same body as the original Cerberus. The head sculpt is also the same, just with pink hair instead of dark brown. I still think the hair sculpt is a bit simplistic, but I didn't really expect them to change it for this figure. You do get some new face plates though, so that's nice. There's the basic plain expression, which is a little too blank and unemotional for my tastes, and this is the only face she has in common with the original. Then you have a worried or sad face, which is the only face with some emotion in it. Finally, you have one with the eyes closed, so Cerberus could appear to be sleeping or in deep thought. I don't know. I wish there were at least one more faceplate with an angry expression that could be used in battle situations, as these expressions are on the softer and relaxed side of things. I mean look at this face from the original version, it's got a pissed off vibe that I love and there isn't really anything like this with this new figure. The way the faceplates and front hair piece attach is the same, with each face using two small pegs and the hair using a rectangular tab. It could really use more tension to keep them in place, and you'll probably find these pieces falling off as you try to pose the figure. Articulation is of course the same as the original figure. You have a ball joint where the head attaches to the neck, a ball joint at the base of the neck, a butterfly joint allowing the shoulders to move forward and back a bit, the shoulders themselves feel hinged to move outward, and they can rotate, though you should avoid a full 360 rotation so you don't damage the skin. The elbows are hinged, and there's a ball joint where the hands connect to the wrists. I think there's a hinge at the upper torso and a ball joint at the lower torso. Legs can move forward and back with a crazy range of motion, and can spread to the sides but not all the way. There are hinged knees that can swivel and ball joints where the feet connect to the ankles. The ball joints where the head, hands, and feet attach don't have a lot of tension. That, coupled with the springy soft skin, limits the range of motion, as the skin will push back on any tilting of these parts. One other issue is the lack of bicep swivels. Rotating the forearms is a lot more awkward without them, and this figure relies on the shoulder articulation to approximate the motion you'd get from a bicep swivel, and it's way more limited because of that. Of course, the soft skin is a huge positive since it allows a wider range of motion overall. 
Her body and limbs can move in ways most figures can't because there isn't any hard plastic to restrict the movement. So she can do really high kicks and her body can twist in ways other figures can only dream of. The Another Color version's outfit is essentially the same as the originals, just in another color. The gray arm and leg sleeves are now in light purple, the white leggings are now black, the black shorts are now pink, and the black sports bra is now white. The numbers and barcode on the arm and leg sleeves are the same, as is the warning label and the claw mark graphics on the shorts. However, there's a noticeable change to the sports bra. The barcode on the black version is not present here, and instead the claw mark graphics from the shorts are enlarged and in silver. This change is fine with me, as the barcode fell off due to the material stretching when I swapped it with the torn sports bra. I do worry about the new graphics getting messed up in a similar way, so I would have been fine with a plain white sports bra here. The hand and shoe sculpts are also the same as the original, but here they are painted dark purple. The black belt and waist pouch remain unchanged. The sheath for her knife is a lighter brown. Her knee pads look a little more clear and less yellow than the original. Moving on to the separately packed accessories, her weird helmet is the same except the attached hairpiece is pink instead of black. You get four extra hands for a total of six, two closed fists that come attached to the figure, a right hand for gripping accessories like the dagger, a left hand for gripping accessories like the smoke grenade, a right hand for holding a gun with a trigger finger, and a right hand that can be used for pointing or holding a gun while practicing trigger safety. You also get two extra boots with the toes bent. These can be used in crouching or prone poses. These extra hands and feet are identical in sculpt to the original versions, just the color is different. The clear magazine sleeve, smoke grenade, M4 carbine, spare magazine, and dagger all look identical to the original version. A small bottle of powder is included to help maintain the seamless body's softness, just like with the original version of the figure. So what's actually new with this figure besides the different colors? Starting with her outerwear, she now has a transparent raincoat instead of the transparent tactical cloak the original had. The raincoat is tailored with actual stitching, and it's roomy enough that you don't need to remove her hands or arm sleeve to get it on. There's a drawstring for tightening the hood, and actual buttons and buttonholes, so you can theoretically button up her coat. Though I wouldn't recommend doing it, as the buttonholes will probably tear. Just like the tactical cloak, on the back of the raincoat is this demonic sort of logo. This logo also appears on the cardboard overlay when you open the box. The hood of the raincoat has a graphic with the word mind and an image of a head. Finally, two recycle icons adorn the lower front of the coat, which is also similar to the tactical cloak. It's nice to see them continue the theme of transparent clothing, but I don't really foresee myself displaying her wearing it. It doesn't lay or wrinkle realistically, and it doesn't look as cool as the original figure's tactical cloak. The long straps of the arm sleeves are kind of annoying too. It looks really weird if you put the straps through the coat sleeve, and then you have these long straps coming out at her wrists. It looks better if you don't put the straps through though. It's also too bad that they didn't give the raincoat a black trim like the tactical cloak. I think it would have matched better, and it would have served the purpose of hiding a wire so you can pose the raincoat dynamically. I also noticed that the raincoat and my tactical cloak got a little cloudy looking. I'm not sure what's causing it, but it does look like it can be wiped away. Next, this new version comes with a new weapon, a Desert Eagle handgun with a metallic pink paint job. It's one solid piece and doesn't feature moving parts, nor a removable magazine. Despite not having a removable magazine, an extra magazine is included. I would have liked to see a holster for this gun, but instead we get a gun case that can open and has an insert where the Desert Eagle and extra clip can be placed. The items don't fit tightly inside, and there's enough room in the case that the magazine will fall out and rattle around when the case is closed. You can remedy this by cutting a piece of foam for the lid of the case. The insert can also be removed if you want to use the case for other purposes. While this case isn't perfect, I do like its inclusion, as it can be a useful prop in photos or any stories you might think up for her. 
There are no alternate battle damage clothes for this version like those that came with the original Cerberus. Paint-wise, the Another Color version is very similar to the original. The hair is of course painted pink this time and is shaded so it's darker at the bottom. Her boots and hands don't have any shading but they are fully painted as the plastic underneath is a different color. The boots this time do not feature any weathering or shading of any kind. This kind of makes them look really unrealistic, but at the same time, it's not a huge deal to me. Paintwork on the gun case looks pretty clean, and the black looks smooth and consistent. The metallic pink Desert Eagle looks nice as well, but some areas do look a little lighter on mine, and there's even a small paint chip. I was a bit worried that putting the gun in her hand would rub off some paint, but so far it's still looking good. The face plates have sharply printed details and the mouths are painted well. The worried face is even showing her teeth but I can't tell if they're painted or if they're just the flesh colored plastic. Eyebrows and eyelashes are now pink, the irises are now dark purple, and interestingly her pupils are pink, which I don't think was necessary. This figure measures just over 6 inches which is just about 15 and a half centimeters. Since I believe this is a TB leak body, it should be compatible with other heads, hands, and feet for use with those bodies, but I don't have any to test that theory. Obviously, you can swap clothes and parts with the original Cerberus figure to suit your color preferences, and even just swapping the heads is kind of interesting. As for scale, here's how she looks with various figmas. SH Figure Arts Chun-Li, Mayfix Spider-Gwen, Sosai Shoujo Tayen Madoka, Rebody Tech Cameo, Marvel Legends Spider Gwen, and Storm Collectibles Tyrus Flare. Cerberus fits in pretty well with the Sosai Shoujo Tayen and Cameo figures, and you can even use Cerberus's head on those bodies. The opposite is not true though, at least not without some modification. Before giving my final thoughts, I do want to go over some things to watch out for. I already mentioned that the face plates and front hair fall off easily, and after taking a ton of photos and videos, it's the most annoying thing about her. I also alluded to the designs on her clothes possibly coming off, and I can already see some of the numbers on her arm sleeves starting to come off. Same goes for the claw marks on her shirt. So if you get her, be sure to be careful when handling any clothing with designs on them. They're sort of like decals and they can crack or come off if they flex too much. My last bit of advice is to keep figures with seamless bodies like this in a neutral pose when you put them on display or in storage. Keeping the limbs in bent positions will weaken the skin and those areas will probably crack or tear first over time. Use the included powder or baby powder to keep the skin feeling soft and not tacky. So if you have the first version of this figure, then you'll know what to expect from this one. The new accessories are a welcome addition, but they aren't a good enough reason on their own to buy this figure. The new colors are the main draw in my opinion, and coupled with the included faceplates, the figure feels a little more whimsical and innocent. There's some good kit patching potential with her outfit, and her seamless body has some great curves, though the articulation has some limits. While I do like the new faceplates, it really needs at least one more on the serious and angry side so she can have a wider range of emotions. In the end, I can only recommend buying her if you like these pink and purple colors, otherwise just get the original. This new version also seems to be more limited and it seems less retailers are carrying her, so obtaining her might cost more than the first figure as well, so that's another thing to consider. So what do you think of this figure? Let me know if you plan on buying or skipping her in the comments below. And that about wraps up another review. As always, thank you for making it this far. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next review. Jam out.